Okay, so we can go straight into this now. So we, we in the last video, we, we, we discussed this idea that um, you can activate or inactivate a, um, a protein, which could be an enzyme, for example, normally is an enzyme, uh, by phosphorylating it, uh, or you can deactivate it by um, dephosphorylating it. So very often uh, you will have inside a cell, you can imagine that you have um, kinases. A kinase is, remember, a kinase is, is, the, is the enzyme that will add a phosphate group and normally it will activate an enzyme. And then you would have the phosphatases that will um, dephosphorylate, remove that phosphate group and inactivate it. So in a sense, kinases and phosphatases are fighting each other. One is trying to activate this particular enzyme by adding a phosphate group, and just as quickly as it's added the phosphate group, the phosphatase comes in and um, is deactivating it. And so, so whether or not a particular enzyme is active or inactive is going to depend upon the, the balance of kinases and the balance of phosphatases. And those kinases and phosphatases might themselves be activated or deactivated by kinases and phosphatases. So it gets rather complicated. Um, let's, let's look at um, uh, an example here that hopefully will crystallize this idea. So we might have, so let's say we've got, um, let's say we've got some enzyme here, I'll call it enzyme A. Why not? And this enzyme A is activated. I'm going to change color here. Um, orange, I think, is good for activation. It's activated by this kinase, which we will call K. So what's the kinase doing? It's phosphorylating. Then there is another enzyme. We'll put, I don't know, maybe green. Um, Another enzyme, this is a phosphatase, we'll call it P, and this is dephosphorylating, so it's inactivating um, the, uh, the enzyme A. And so, so the, the kinase and the phosphatase are fighting against each other in this way. Now, of course, as I said, uh, the kinase itself might be activated by some other kinase. Um, we might call this a kinase kinase, and indeed these names do exist. Um, lots of kinase kinases, and then even kinase kinase. So you can start to see why these these cell signaling diagrams that you, we we uh, I showed you in the in the last video or video two ago maybe um, why they can become rather rather complicated. Uh, now often now another way to think about this phosphatase is that it because it's it's inactivating this enzyme. Uh, a, uh, is to think that it, it's inhibiting. So you think of it as inhibiting, it's inactivating it. So often in, um, when you look at these cell signaling diagrams, and we will return to uh, look at them a little bit later, you often see um, something that looks, you often see a different kind of arrow. So often you'll see an arrow, you often see an arrow that kind of looks like this, often with a flat end. Um, there might even be a little minus sign or like this. Uh, and basically what it's showing is that, that this phosphatase um, were, is, is inhibiting, it's inactivating the enzyme. Uh, whereas a regular arrow, um, such as on the left here, um, this regular arrow is uh, is activating and sometimes occasionally but very rarely you might see something like a plus here to make that absolutely clear so so when you're looking at a uh, a diagram you know we could draw we could make one up you might see something rather complex you might see um i don't know something like a um, arrow b arrow, C, um, maybe flat arrow, D, 
and then D to E. Um, and then even, I mean, these, you can also get things like this, where this actually kind of loops back here. So what's this saying? You know, it looks kind of a little bit complicated, but all it's saying is that A is activating B. So A is probably, not necessarily, but A is probably some kind of kinase. Um, the clue will sometimes be in the name, not always. Um, then when B is activated, um, it activates C. So activation of B exposes its kinase active site, which causes it to phosphorylate C. And then C is perhaps a, a phosphatase. So when it's activated, it actually inhibits D by dephosphorylating it. So it could be a phosphatase. Again, not always, but often. Um, phosphatase. And, and D when it's active, in other words, when it's not been inhibited by C, uh, will activate uh, E. So D is also probably, a, or very often, a kinase. And then E seems to be activating B here. Um, so E itself might be a kinase. So this idea, you have this, this network developing of molecule or protein, enzymes, usually, that are interacting with each other and having specific... Um, uh, effects on each other, either activating each other uh, or, or inhibiting each other. Um, okay. So, let's take this a little bit further. So, so far, um, we've looked at phosphorylation and uh, dephosphorylation. So, phosphorylation by kinases and dephosphorylation by phosphatases, uh, which are the, the standard way of um, enzymes uh, activating each other or deactivating each other. So we call this activation and then deactivation or sometimes inhibition. But inhibition is slightly different. Um, okay, so let's have a look uh, at another way that you can activate an enzyme. So, so phosphorylation and dephosphorylation is, is by far, well, is by far the most important way you can activate and inactivate an enzyme. Um, but sometimes uh, you activate an enzyme simply by, by another protein binding to that enzyme in, another, in a place normally away from the active site. So the principle is exactly the same. Um, so when, when, a, when a, an enzyme, an inactive enzyme, is phosphorylated, when you add the phosphate group, it causes a distortion in the shape of the enzyme, right? which opens up the active site. Sometimes you can open up the active site by having another protein bind to um, some other site on the enzyme. So this is a, a generally a less, it, it's a more temporary way of activating an enzyme by having a protein bind to it. Because often that, that binding interaction will be, will be quite short-lived. Not always, but very often. So we have another way of activating um, an enzyme. Sometimes um, you can inhibit or inactivate an enzyme by having another protein uh, bind uh, to that enzyme. So, so it's so when you see these arrows that show that you know en enzyme A activates enzyme B, it's very often going to be a kinase that phosphorylates it, but not always. Sometimes there will be a binding interaction between A and B, uh, which activates B uh, or inactivates B. Um, so, so you have to be a little bit careful about how you're interpreting um, these diagrams. Okay, so let's, I think there's a lot of information there and, and, and it might seem like um, we're not, this is all kind of by the by, like, why is he telling me all of this? But this is extremely important because we are trying to get to the point where we, we, we can understand why when when a molecule, when a ligand binds to a receptor on the outside of the cell, it causes often quite a dramatic change on the inside. Uh, and that is because um, the, the initial change in the, the receptor, the initial activation of the receptor, triggers often this cascade of signaling, uh, signaling interactions. In other words, receptor is activated. That causes some protein to bind to the intracellular domain of the receptor, which activates that receptor, activates that protein. Maybe it's 
opens the active site of this protein, which might be a kinase. That then phosphorylates a protein, a particular protein, and activates it. And then that, that protein uh, activates another one, etc., etc., etc. So let's let's kind of look at a kind of a generalized example that hopefully illustrates this, um, and hopefully it will all make sense now, having been through everything. So. We will start, let's start with, uh, we might as well start from the top. So let's, um, um, we'll start with a, actually no, I'm going to clear that. Okay, up here is better. because We need the inside. So here's our membrane. Um, and we're going to put in that membrane some kind of uh, receptor. So you know now what a receptor looks like. It's got an extracellular domain, ligand binding site, in, uh, transmembrane domain, and then some kind of intracellular domain. So we have a ligand. Um, draw a ligand in red. Ligand binds into the receptor uh, at the ligand binding site that causes some kind of change on the inside of the uh, on the intercellular domain which allows let's say some other protein and there are certain types of special proteins that tend to bind but we don't really we're not interested in giving these things names not so important so we have it binds to a uh, a protein uh, on the inside of the cell which then, um, let's say, it might activate another protein by binding to it. So it might allow it to bind to another protein and activate it. This might then be a kinase, which activates a uh, protein here. So I'll start naming these now. I'll call this protein A. Um, so, so this protein here, is activating protein A, and then, then protein A might then activate, um, let's say, protein B. And again, this could be a kinase, it could be a phosphorylation reaction, it could just be binding the protein B, but it activates it in some way. What does protein B do? Well, we'll say that protein B then activates protein C. Um, protein C might inactivate protein D. Um, Protein D might then inactivate uh, protein B. Uh, it might also inactivate another protein. Let's call it protein E. Um, and protein E normally activates protein C. So <laughs> this is, you know, I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. Uh, but, but hopefully you can see this idea that, that this very simple binding interaction of the ligand at the receptor can cause of quite a complex series of events inside the inside the cell. Now, you know, the way that information is transmitted through the cell uh, is through these activation and inactivation processes. It's by you know, enzymes being activated, which phosphorylates other enzymes and activates them, which then goes on to activate other enzymes. And these enzymes then go to activate to uh, other enzymes or deactivate them. So, so. Proteins speak to each other, if you like, through these interactions by activation and inactivation uh, reactions. And depending on the receptor, uh, different pathways, different so-called signaling pathways um, will uh, be activated. So in the, in the next uh, video, I want to look in a little bit more detail at how these pathways uh, work. Um, and, and how they are regulated by the binding of the ligand. So, see you in the next video. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, however, if, um, if you do want to support the production of future courses or you just want to leave a tip, um, then there are virtual tip boxes below, there's PayPal, Ko-fi, Ko whatever it is, even a Bitcoin address, if that is your thing. Minimally, please like and subscribe, it really helps me, and please follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you use them, Alien Insect, and I think that's about it. I hope you're enjoying the course, thank you.